turning our attention to that of uh, Libya, where a humanitarian crisis developing there, that the continuing siege of the town of Bani Walid, a former Qaddafi stronghold, has left residents without vital supplies. Dr. Abdul Hamid Al Shandoli, a member of the local council, is inside the besieged city, gave us his account of what exactly is happening there. The situation in Bani Walid is standard and bad. So it's no food, no drugs, no electricity, no cooking gas. Still, the armed group surrounding the city. They will close the, the main entrance of Bani Walid. And no, no Congress uh, still as it is. They have done nothing. Although we have asked them to, to, to break the function and let the food. And uh, we have talked to the UN uh, secretary in uh, Libya. They still have done nothing. And it's more difficult day by day. All right, let's discuss this further now with our geopolitical analyst, uh, Patrick Hennison. Good to see you today. Thanks for coming on RT. Thank you. Um, the siege of Bani Walid, it actually started because the government wants to arrest the suspected murderers of the man who's thought to have captured Colonel Gaddafi. The town failed to hand them over, but is this siege to you an appropriate response, do you think? Well, not, not in a civilized sort of normally formed country it's not um, but as we know libya is anything but civilized and formed in a normal organic fashion uh this the, the ruling party that you have in in libya right now is a is an amateur government it's an artificial uh creation of the west uh in in the post Gaddafi regime change plan so th this gives you an indication of, of of how they're governing in this country and certainly the, there was no stability in Libya compared to before the NATO bombing and destruction of their country. All right Patrick as you say it's a very amateur government at the moment as you said a moment ago and many would agree with you on that uh, now though the residents of the besieged Bani Walid town are appealing to the United Nations for help good move? Well the yeah, that I don't think they're going to get much help from the UN, seeing that the United Nations is the co-architect of this post Qaddafi Libya. Um, they're half responsible for this sort of the fraud that was uh, imposed by the UN resolution 1973, which was uh, the, starting with the no-fly zone, which turned into a bombing zone uh, and a free-for-all for, for NATO countries. Um, but uh, it, it doesn't surprise me um, that the UN will be ineffectual because I can't see one instance over the whole globe, over the whole geopolitical spectrum worldwide where the UN has done anything of any value uh, in, in the last decade or, or two. They're, they're a complete failure and they're controlled by their number one funder, which is the United States and their sort of uh, mini-me Britain. All right. Now, as you mentioned a moment ago, I just, just want to come back to this whole point of view of you referring to the Libyan government as being uh, amateur, because certainly there, there's a political crisis in the making. Uh, you know, the siege ongoing, uh, the, the, the government seeming powerless or perhaps misdirected as to how to deal with it. Um, do, do you think the country's new political system could be doomed even before it really gets started here? Well, what, one thing you can look at really is, um, you know, with Libya, because it's be, because of the the kind of Western imperialist kind of plan with Libya has come after a couple of other um, so-called successes, which they would count as Afghanistan and Iraq. If you look at the, the U.S. installed president in Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, um, he's not, he doesn't have any real legitimacy amongst Afghanis, but he's backed by the U.S. and he's a U.S. puppet. Um, in Libya, it's even worse uh, because they, the West is having trouble with the sort of overt agenda of installing a pro-American and a pro-Western um, banking sort of leader. So they've got serious problems in Libya. There's no legitimacy really with this post Qaddafi government. Um, it makes Muammar Qaddafi's government look like a, a beacon of light and a shining city on the hill. Patrick, if I, Patrick, if I can just jump in for a moment, I do apologize. I'm running very low on time here on IT, but you know, you, you draw the comparisons, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, now we're looking at Libya. Let's talk about the next step that everybody is zeroing in on, that of Syria. What's next for Syria? You know, the, the, this, whole, this whole story with, with Libya and now Syria, Syria is directly linked to Libya because Libya did send al-Qaeda fighters who are being backed by the West in a logistical and financial fashion. But this reminds me of the Spanish Inquisition, Roy, where instead of, you know, Rome imposing 
uh, Catholicism on, on the Spanish and people who resist. This is like the Freedom and Democracy Inquisition. That's really what we're looking at, especially in terms of Libya and Syria. This is the West going in directly or through its proxies or through its Gulf state um, petro monarchies in order to impose a Western friendly regime in that country that they can then come in and colonize in a financial way. Particularly, we're talking about private banking and public private initiatives and selling off the assets of the country to um, at, um, pennies on the dollar to Western countries. And that's what the plan was in Libya. They're having trouble because of instability. And in Syria, it could be much worse because in Syria, we're looking at a protracted civil war now in the making or something even worse. Well, there are certainly some that are saying, well, there's already been a civil war ongoing for years, and that of Iraq. And here we have step one, step two, step three, step four. Patrick Henningsen, a geopolitical analyst at Live in London. Many thanks, as always. Thanks, Roy.